In this lesson, we're going to make this 3D photo actually printable. Give it some geometry so that it can be read by our slicer and be 3D printed. We're also going to add a base. So let's get started. Make sure that you have your amber 3D photo selected. And if your computer is kind of lagging because of all this geometry, um, what we can do is add a decimate modifier. So just go to add modifier and decimate. Second column, fifth one down. And just keep an eye on the number of faces down here at the bottom as we slide this value. Now you don't want to go too much. I went all the way to zero. Maybe we just type in maybe like 0.5. It may be easier than sliding. So that just kind of cut everything in half. Um, and that may make it a little lighter on your computer. You could even do like 0.2 maybe. So, and it actually looks kind of cool. It's like this low poly photo effect, uh, but we can turn that back off or on if we want later. So just helping people out if you have a kind of a slow computer, but let's go ahead and make this 3D printable. So to do that, make sure you have your 3D printing toolbox. So click on the little tab there. If you don't have this, you can turn it on in the add-ons over here in your preferences. Just go to add uh, add-ons and search for 3D. Make sure you have mesh 3D print toolbox. So now we've we've got our 3D print toolbox. We've got our photo selected. Now we're going to tab into edit mode or you can just hit edit. And what we want to do is just click on solid and notice our photo has disappeared, but it's not really disappeared. It's just because we're in edit mode. So if we tab back over into object mode, it'll reappear, so don't freak out. But just go back into edit mode, make sure you hit solid, and then this result will pop up all these non-manifold edges. So just click on that, and that will just quickly outline our edges for us. And now what we wanna do is extrude these. So we could go over here and click on this, you know, extrude button or this extrude tool, but I like to just hit E on the keyboard. And now we've got, you know, we've got something here, but I want to lock it to the Z axis, so just hit E and then hit Z on your keyboard. And, you know, we could just eyeball it here, but I'm just going to type in negative three on my keyboard and then click, and that will confirm it. So, you know, just give it some thickness. And now it's just kind of wide open here at the bottom. Uh, you want to make sure that all of your outlined edges are still selected. If not, you can click on this uh, button again. And so we want to close this up. And an easy way to do that is just to hit F and that will fill it in. So looky there. Hey, now this can be 3D printed. Let's go ahead and tab back over into edit, into object mode. And there we go. So now we're, we've got some here. We've got a cool 3D printable um, photo and you could 3D print this as it is, but I want to take, I want to go a little further and make a little, like a little base that it can sit on. So click on your photo hit um, R to rotate, and then hit X on your keyboard, and then just type 90. And that will, you know, make it kind of sit up. And it kind of moved my light. So you, you know, I'll just grab the light, hit G, and just kind of move it somewhere cool. That looks pretty cool. Even that, that's fine. The light doesn't really matter. It's just for looks, really. But now what we want to do is add a base to it. So notice that my 3D cursor is way over here, but I want it at the base of my photo. So I'm just gonna grab this photo, hit G and Z, and just slide it up. And if I hold control, it should kind of snap. So I'm just holding control while I'm moving it. Uh, so I just hit G, Z, and then hold control, and just kind of lock it uh, to the, uh, the bottom here. And notice our 3D cursor is way over here, just floating <laughs> right here. Uh, we can just do Shift S and put the cursor back to the world origin right there because we're going to add a cube. So how do we add a cube? That's right, students. <laughs> do Shift A to add. And we're going to do a mesh cube. And it's really, 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 really tiny. Um, so let's just crank it up. 
there should be an add cube here as long as you didn't click out. Just scroll that. And it looks like that'll take a while. So let's just type in something like 128. Hey, there, there we go. And I'm going to switch out of Eevee or rendered view. Just go back to photo or solid view. Make it a little less taxing on my computer. And that looks pretty good. Um, the edge is kind of sticking out here. So with the cube still selected, I'm just going to hit S and scale it up just a little bit. So it's slightly larger, you know, than the, the edge of the photo, you know, just sticking out just a little bit further. So let's go ahead and rename this cube. Just double click and call it base because it's going to be the base. We'll go into edit mode. So just click your cube or your base, hit tab. And now make sure you have everything selected. If you don't, uh, if nothing's selected, you can hit A and that will highlight everything. And then just do S and then type Z. And that's going to scale on the Z axis. So, and make sure that your mouse isn't like really close to the center here. Like if you hit S and Z, you know, it's like, woo, it's like too, it kind of gets crazy. So swing way over here, hit S and Z, and now you have a lot more control over your scale. So really just make something maybe about as thick as the, the photo there. We're just going to look around. That looks pretty good, but it's just like really too big for my liking. So now what we want to do is scale on the Y axis. So let's hit S and then Y. And just scale it in just a little bit and you can kind of just eyeball it you don't want it too small or the photo will probably just fall over you kind of want to make it stick out just a little bit so i'll show you from the side view just hit three so something like that is fine you know it doesn't have to be perfect and you could even hit g and y kind of you know center it up if you want really i'm just kind of eyeballing it there and that looks pretty cool so let's go ahead and tab back into our object mode and I mean that's pretty much it so one thing um, we have to notice is that these are still two separate objects right so when we're doing 3d print design we need to merge these together and what better way to do that than with the bool tool so I'm gonna click on the base first and then shift click on the photo and go to our tools and it looks like it's gone, but if you ever go to edit and it's like nothing's there, they're just right up here. So I'm just going to twiddle that down. And we could click this brush Boolean difference button. Um, but what I like to do is use my keyboard. So I'm just going to do control plus and add those together. So now we've got a flexible design. You can see that um, our modifiers have been applied. We've got our, our Boolean right here. This is our base added to the photo. And keep in mind, we haven't added, we haven't applied any of these modifiers. And I don't want you to, unless you absolutely, absolutely have to, because I always want you to be able to be a super flexible designer. So keep all these open and we can even turn off the base. Notice it's got like this weird outline. Um, that's because of the bool tool. So if you ever wanted to, you know, move it around after the fact, you could, but I'm just going to turn it off. And that's looking pretty cool. So... You know, we could even turn the decimate off if we wanted to bring some of our geometry back you know, or take it back to low poly, whichever you want to do. But one thing that's that I like to do is notice if I grab this uh, this photo here and hit G, the base doesn't move with it. So what I like to do is, uh, you know, take the base and grab it and hover over the photo, hold shift, and you'll notice that it says drop to set parent. And then let go. And now the base is inside of this 3D photo layer. That way, if we grab it, the 3D photo, the base will stay with it. So and just hit escape to stop that. But that's just a trick I like to do when I'm using booleans. So try and get in the habit of, you know, booleaning and then parenting things together. And that's looking pretty good to me. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to inspect this and send it for send it over uh, to our slicer for 3D printing. And let's go ahead and do it.